This is military life, special forces style. And these are your hosts, Charlie Company Commandos, Matty and Pete. Welcome back to the second episode of The Fist. We had an awesome response to last week's episode, so this week we're serving up an arsehole of hurt. Yeah, Matty, the boys been back at it this week. FE boys. Yeah. This amateur TV show called The Fist was put together in a makeshift studio in a compound at the Tirankot military base in southern Afghanistan using footage taken from chest, rifle and helmet cameras. It's far from an official defence production. It's full of pratfalls and juvenile behaviour. <laughs> But the video is also a compelling glimpse behind the veil of Australia's Special Forces War. These scenes were filmed in the Mirabad Valley. Charlie Company is heading into a firefight. American soldiers called it the Mirabadass Valley. It's a Taliban supply route laced with improvised explosive devices. Four Australian soldiers have been killed here. Insurgents fire from a nearby copse of trees. The commandos try to keep them pinned down while moving through a cluster of Afghan mud-walled houses to outflank them. After fighting for hours, the commandos leave as quickly as they arrived, making one last sweep of the lush valley where moments before they were in a life and death firefight. They land in the bare hills above, where vehicles await. This is rare footage. The Defence Department maintains a vice-like grip on any images or information from the Afghan war. Well, I think the approach to release of information by successive governments of different political persuasions involved in the Afghan war has been highly self-defeating for the soldiers. It helps the public to know what the soldiers are doing, to put their actions in context, to get a fuller picture of what Australia's campaign in Afghanistan has involved. A dozen Australian commandos are among the 40 Australian soldiers killed in fighting during the Afghan war. Day after day for six months, the commandos of Charlie Company bolt from helicopters in the day, they jump from planes at night, to raid compounds of suspected Taliban or other insurgents. This particular unit uh, spent um, over half the days it was in country, uh, outside the wire, uh, deep inside uh, uh, territory either Taliban controlled or heavily uh, Taliban influenced, uh, finding weapons caches, destroying uh, IEDs uh, and uh, actually killing Taliban. The behaviour of Charlie Company shown in this video is not the varnished image the Defence Department likes to portray. This is what happens in Afghanistan if you're not a cooperative donkey. <laughs> it shows, I think, people who need to blow off steam every now and then. Um, the incidents in the video, I don't think, in the context of, of the work they're performing, are that outrageous. Back at base, at night, they let their hair down. Uh, well, the first clip we're going to go into is a bit of a golf one, the TK International, we call it. Hey, Australian Special Forces soldiers endured an intensely high workload during the Afghan war. Many served more than half a dozen tours. 
So you tell her to help you out. The effort they went to partly explains the behaviour uh, back in camp. But some of it's been exaggerated. Uh, some of it was uh, stupid behaviour. Some of it was safety breaches. Um, but let's face it, we're sending young Australians off to uh, fight wars under very difficult conditions. And young Australians fighting wars have always uh, been involved in, uh, in some things uh, that political and military hierarchies have frowned on. Charlie Company left Afghanistan in November 2009. Despite the intensity and danger of their work, they left without a single fatality. Sometimes I think I'm happy in the First World War, soldiers wrote poems, they wrote novels, they did paintings. In this war, uh, soldiers take pictures and they make movies. Uh, and this is going to be a part of Australia's war record. It will be an important part of Australia's war record so that in 100 years we know what these guys did and we can put some context around how hard their job was.